Tonight on Oregon Art Beat, gather with commercial fishermen as they anchor up in Astoria to share what you may not expect, songs and poems from the sea. Look over the shoulder of the artist known as Milo as he torches an oil painting to create his art just as he does for the Grammy Awards crowd. And meet a fiber artist designer extraordinaire who spent many years creating one-of-a-kind pieces for the likes of Fleetwood Mac. Oregon Art Beat is next. Support for Oregon Art Beat has been provided by the following. The James F. and Marion L. Miller Foundation. The Allen Foundation for the Arts and OB Media. Good evening, I'm Casey Cowan. And I'm Gray Eubank. Welcome to another edition of Oregon Art Beat. We have a jam-packed show, so let's get started, Casey. Okay. We've profiled a lot of painters on Art Beat, but we've never profiled one as, well, as hot as this one. He's not only popular, he works with fire, literally. Tom D'Antoni joins us with more about a Eugene man who calls himself Milo. Milo. First, we'll show you how this remarkable artist takes a sheet of metal, oil paint, fire and turns it into torched art and then we'll let you in on his connection with the grammy awards remember milo's not a musician he's an artist just watch i start off with a uh, 300 series stainless steel and it has no finish on it it's just a mill finish We're so used to seeing artists put color on canvas. What is that? This is uh, 18 years worth of study. <laughs> this is me playing around and uh, trying to come up with something that would uh, burn into the metal and, uh, and leave colors after it's burnt. And it's just my, uh, my witch's brew. Oh, it's a secret recipe. That's, that's my secret recipe. That's, that's where the real action is. So what do you anticipate happening with this? This one we should get something that's kind of uh, violin tones, something that's nicely aged wood with, uh, with a little bit of fun in there. Maybe, maybe a little bit of wineish red and, and a little bit of brown. Now it's ready to burn. The burning will set the color. Um, and I have different stages where I call them browning and blacking and bluing. The burning will actually uh, burn my paint mixture off of the metal and so that when you actually rub the metal there's nothing there. It's torched oil painting. Does anything about how this looks now surprise you? Uh, yeah, a little bit. What? Well, it's just about this point I'm always, uh, I'm always a little bit confused on where it's at. And then after I spray it down, I spray it down with a little bit of uh, my liquid witch's brew. Are you changing it by how you spray or is it? Actually, yeah, I am changing it by the way I spray. I've got I've to watch the hotter spots on it. And uh, if I don't, I get big wrinkles in the metal. In the beginning, I got big wrinkles on every piece of metal, but but no, I'm much more relaxed about it. A lot of these areas are actually gonna come off when I rub it down. I do a hand oil rub, and, uh, and a lot of it does come off, and, and that's where the surprise is at. But wait, you're still wondering about the Grammy connection. Now, while Milo is rubbing his painting down, we'll let you in on it. I put a few paintings out, and I guess I caught a big fish with one of them. Um, I had one at... Uh, Can we say who? 
Yeah, actually, I, at Joe Federigo's Jazz Bar in downtown Eugene, Oregon. Um, he's got a jazz guitar, and he's got it up on a door, and a, a promoter for the Grammys actually saw it. And after that, she had to, had to find out who did that painting, and she found me, and, and uh, I did a couple paintings for them and sent them down, and they liked them so much that they put me in the Grammys. And the next step, I was in the Grammy Awards and playing and going from parties to parties and, and uh, doing things that I never thought I would do. That is so Hollywood. Yeah, very, very Hollywood. Very Hollywood, very late night Hollywood. Who has your work in their, uh, in their homes that we might recognize? Um, well, there's some really big names that I've learned I can't mention. <laughs> Isn't that frustrating? It is kind of frustrating. It's, uh, in the very beginning, I, I was pretty excited. I was pretty excited, and uh, I've learned that I've got to watch my tongue a little bit. And, there, you know, I can understand that celebrities are celebrities and, and go from there. That was last year. Milo will be at next weekend's Grammys, too, and he's made a piece honoring this year's Person of the Year, Bono of U2. That will be Bono in the middle, eventually. The rest of it will look like these wings. Milo has come a long way in a short time. What do you think so far? I think it looks pretty good. I think that I'll leave it and I'll go ahead and, uh, and dry it off and rub it down. Really? I think, it's a, I think it's a finished piece. Is that what you were going for? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's dark um, and it's got, uh, it's got uh, a lot of its own character already, so that's where I want it. Say that's finished. I actually I think I considered myself more of a metal craftsman first, and the uh, paintings have actually brought out the musician in me. Do you know anybody else is doing torch oil? Not yet, no, no. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be others, but that's okay. That's, so it's a, it's you're a the good man? direction, yeah. You're the man? I'm the man. I, I, I started it. Milo's art includes beautiful metalwork for private homes. Oh, it looks beautiful. Even the dogs like it. He's delivering a table for a home at the Pfeiffer Winery in Eugene that features much of his work. This is perfect. And the piece we saw him make? It did end up at the Chatwin Stapleton Gallery in Portland. And he called it Artbeat Axe. You know, I think that is the first piece ever named after this show. Milo is also working on torched paintings featuring flowers and fruit. You can see some more of his work on his website at milosart.com. What a break. <laughs> just, yeah. just shows you how much luck is involved in success. You're right. He could have been working for another 10 years in relative obscurity if one person hadn't walked into a bar in Eugene that night. Timing is everything. everything. Thanks, Tom. I'm a salmon troller, a sailor on the sea. Yeah, a salmon troller, a pilot viking me. I'm a hardy Norseman, any hardship I can take. Then I have lingonberries to put on my pancake. Oh, lingonberry, you're so very tasty, darling. I save one bite of you, and I'm a blue if yours, a mine or a bay. Heading for Alaska, loading up supplies, all the stuff to put the board. Nearly pops my eyes. I cleaned out the marine supply, the grocery and dairies, and picked up 600.
Support for Oregon Art Beat has been provided by the following. The James F. and Marion L. Miller Foundation. The Allen Foundation for the Arts. And OB Media.